Today, I want to talk to you guys about feeling stressed, feeling anxious, and just not being in our right mind, being overwhelmed. I mean, we all have those moments. Every single one of us at one point in our life experienced moments where we just had just about enough and we just need one second to just calm down. And I'm sure you have experienced this feeling. It's not fun. It's extremely overwhelming. It's extremely, it's just exhausting, especially if we're about to make a choice, if we're about to do something, or if we're trying to go somewhere and we're anxious about it, it just disables us, puts us in one position and we're just stuck there. But how do we actually deal with this? How do we actually overcome this stress and this anxiety so we can make our choice and we can take our steps into achieving our goal or reaching our destination or just living? How do we do it? Well, there is one thing that we can do and that's going through the what if highway, asking ourselves the what if question. Now, this at the beginning might sound extremely rough or extremely, for some people, hard to hear, but stay with me and I will tell you at the end why this might be a good idea. And by the way, if you have other suggestions, let me know. And if you hate this, let me know why you hate this. But here, here's the thing that we have to do. Let's say I have to make a stressful, this. I have to make a decision that has become extremely stressful, extremely, uh, it's just overwhelming. And that could be, for example, it could be the stress of driving. Now, this is just an example. I'm just going to go over a small portion of it. And then you just learn what I mean from it and just apply it to where it's applicable. So my stress is because I'm stressed because if I drive, I might get into an accident. Well, okay, that's understandable. That's something that we all have experienced. So one thing that we have to do when we're in that situation, ask ourselves, okay, I might get into an accident. I'm scared of being driving. That driving part makes me nervous. So now the question comes, what if I get into an accident? Well, if I get into an accident, uh, it will hurt my car. My car will be destroyed. What if your car gets destroyed? Well, I won't be able to drive it anymore. What if you're, I won't be able to drive? Well, I have to ask someone else to drive me. What if I ask someone else to drive me? Well, it's just not going to feel good. What about my car? What if I get to an accident? What will happen to my car? Well, I have to get it repaired. What if I can't afford the repair? Well, I have to borrow some money and so on and so forth. You see where I'm going with this. Again, this is just, even though it's just a portion of it, but the goal of this exercise is to go through every single scenario. And one way that we could do it to keep track of it, because sometimes it's so big that we lose control, is to write them down. Take a note of them in a small notepad. But what's the point of this? How is this going to help me? This is just going to make me more anxious. But let me tell you this. Think about being getting scared. Imagine if you're trying to enter a room, someone is hiding behind the door, and you don't, you're not able to see it. And the very moment that you enter that room, they jump out and they say, Poof, right in your face. How would that feel? I mean, you, I will be startled. I will be scared. I might be <laughs> screaming. Some might cry. Some might just jump. Some might just... It's scary, right? Every one of us at one point experienced being scared at something. Now imagine if that room was entirely made out of glass. And as you're about to enter that room, you see the person hiding and you're able to see that they're about to jump and scare you. And let's say you enter the room and they jump and they say, Oof. what happens now? Are you scared? No. Why? Because you were anticipating them. Because you know they were hiding and this might have happened. Now, this is the first step. So don't just stay with me. So here's the same thing with that what if highway. 
the goal is not for us to not know that the danger exists. Because I could tell you driving is safe, nothing will happen, and that's simply wrong. There is risk with driving. There is risk with everything. Everything has risk. The reason that we are so afraid of it and the reason that we are so anxious and stressful about a situation is because we never give ourselves the time and attention to sit down and actually go through the steps that need, it's needed. You know, I actually did the research and now that we're talking about driving, I actually did the research and every second there is about thousands of accidents happen in the world. That's a lot. You know, it was 1.3 million accidents a day. Something like something crazy big like that. I might be wrong, but correct me. If you know the right number, let me know. Or if you Google it, let me know. But that's crazy. That's a scary. So what do we do? Do we stop driving? No, we don't stop driving. We need to drive. I need to drive. I know the risk that is involved in driving. So what do I do? Well, since there is a lot of risk involved, I will go and read the book first. What to expect? What is it that is the law? What is it that I need to do in order to stay safe? Then I will go and drive. How is it that I need to drive? When do I put the brake? When do I do this, that? And then I'll take a test. And after that, I wear my seatbelt. After wearing my seatbelt, I will buy all the rules and regulation of the state or city that I live in or the country that I live in. And in case something happened, since I know all the risk that is involved, I give myself health insurance. I get my car, car insurance. And I have the law by my side. So the goal is to, and all of those people who wrote those books, the laws and regulation, they ask themselves, what if? What if somebody turns too fast? That will cause them an accident. So at the uh, road where there's a, there is a curve, if the curve is too much, we need to reduce the speed. So if the speed limit is 50 miles an hour in that road, by the curve, it needs to be 35 miles an hour, and so on and so forth. See, by doing these little steps and recognizing the risk that is involved, we understand the thing that we are anxious and the thing that we are stressed about, and we're not just saying, oh, just go sit down for 10 minutes, close your eyes, meditate, and whoop de do everything is fixed, because that just simply doesn't happen. Those feelings are not going to go away. We might fool ourselves for a minute or two and just be okay. But after a while, it will come back. And when it comes back, it's not fun. But if we look at them critically, if we look at them under the microscope, and if we recognize what is it that I'm stressed, what is the worst thing that is going to happen, what is the things that are going to happen after that, now we're more... We're more inside of it. The walls become glass and we can see right through it. And stress and anxiety goes down and down and down and down. Now, there are some things that are much deeper than this. And they go back to traumatic experiences. They go back to previous uh, traumas. And that those things, they take a little bit more, uh, I want to say, work and emphasis on them and i will recommend if you're going to trauma seek a professional help and go through that with someone who's professional and who's there with you to guide you through it share with them because everyone is different but this is a great exercise in order to kind of help yourself start rolling that ball of understanding your situation what is about to happen and what options that you have. As always, I hope that you enjoyed it. Stay healthy, stay motivated, and know that nothing's more important than your mental health.